Hello, it's me, Edie. Uh, six years ago on this channel, I made this face out of a guitar. Um, I made it because I didn't have the money to buy a acoustic bass at a music store. I still would not have that money if I wanted to buy such a thing now. Some things never change. But I thought that I would do sort of like a video revisiting this space since so many of you have watched this video. Thank you so much. Um, I was actually kind of overwhelmed by how many people have watched that video and giving me lovely compliments about how they've tried it themselves and how it's worked for you. Um, so I figured I would revisit it and answer some of the questions that people have asked and sort of give you all an update about like where this instrument stands now and what I use it for now. And then maybe play you guys a couple of songs so you can actually hear what it sounds like. Um, since I feel like I have um, the skills to actually demonstrate a few different things now that maybe I didn't six years ago. So. First thing is that um, I had made a video earlier this week um, where I was showing you all that I had whittled this bridgey piece right here um, because my cat ran away with <laughs> uh, the original one while I was restringing it. Um, that's kind of just one thing that I wanted to emphasize. This instrument, if you have made it yourself, you know this, but if you're considering doing this project, um, the good thing about it is that all of the materials are things that are really easily findable. So if something breaks, you can remake parts of it out of whatever is available to you. Basically, I made this um, little bit right here just out of a maple stick on the ground and I whittled it with an X-Acto knife so that it would, you know, match the shape of the instrument. Um, what else? A few years ago, I put bass tuning pegs on this guitar. It's a 50-50 where I, whether I actually recommend this or not. Um, I put up the video at the time because I was sort of torn. I thought, well, maybe if someone like wants the advice on how to do it, like this is generally how I managed it. But as I mentioned then, I did mess it up a little bit in the back, which doesn't affect the sound, but you know, it wasn't the right kind of bit to use. And so it kind of tore up the back. It does make it a little bit harder to put in a hard case, um, although there's no problems putting it in a soft case. Um, but it is a lot of trouble. The lacquer is really hard to drill through, so 50-50. If it's really bugging you that your E string doesn't properly fit into the guitar peg, and that then the F here is like the thin part of the string, if that's really pissing you off, like it was for me, then like, yeah, maybe do this. But don't use a spade bit. Don't do that. <laughs> to this day, I'm still not exactly sure what kind of bit you should use. So maybe um, ask someone who knows more about making guitars than me. Um, uh, the other question I got, speaking of people who know more about guitars, there's a couple of people in the comments who um, very flattered to be asked whether I am a luthier, but no, no, I am not a luthier. If someone is a luthier and is watching this, I would love to hear from you um, about how uh, I could make this project better and, you know, maybe uh, ask you some of my more random questions about like how this thing is put together, but yes, no, not a luthier. Uh, very flattered that some of you thought so. Love you. Um, okay, what else? Uh, what kind of strings I use? Right, in the original video description, like six years ago, I said it doesn't matter what kind of strings you use, electric or acoustic doesn't matter. Wrong, 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 wrong. Consider this the updated information. It does matter. They need to be phosphor bronze. Um, any kind of phosphor bronze. What's, what are on here right now are actually long scale phosphor bronze strings because short scale ones are kind of hard to find, but it, it doesn't matter. You just clip them to the right length and off you go. If you're wondering which way to string it, because I just strung it up yesterday and I can sort of tilt it and show you, you string it so the beads are underneath your door hinge. You can see the little gap that's created there. 
by having the beads underneath the door hinge and then they go over your little bridgey bit and then like so. So you can see that's that's how you string it. And you know, you just string it like anything. It will make a terrible, terrible, awful sound when you pull the string through the metal. Just warning you, happens every time. It's awful to hear, but it doesn't actually hurt the instrument. Um, at least I don't think it does. Maybe it does hurt the string to drag it through the metal. Well, it hasn't broken in six years. The previous strings, I left them on for like five years because I never had like $40 to buy new bass strings. I spent $40 the one time on strings and I was like, well, that's it. I spent my hundred bucks and now I'm just gonna drag it out for as long as possible. Um, but you know, I figured it's, I'm stuck at home. It's COVID-19, time to, you know, give the old girl some love. So I don't think there's anything else I need to tell you, but I have had a few requests um, on the previous video to demonstrate the instrument. I'll be completely honest, when I first built that instrument, I was a beginner bassist. Um, so I didn't feel super comfortable like really demonstrating it. Um, I feel more comfortable now. So I'm going to take you guys through um, kind of like what it sounds like and what you can expect from this project if you do it yourself. So first though, I'm gonna tune, because you gotta tune your instrument. Okay, so uh, the open strings are now tuned. Let's see what the intonation is like if I, like, let's see if they're still in tune if I press down the 12th fret. Okay, that's about a quarter of a tone sharp. quarter of a tone sharp, just under a quarter of a tone sharp, and just under a quarter of a tone sharp. So the intonation is a little, eh. let's see what happens if I shove this guy a little bit forward. Will that make it better? Oh, that makes it way, 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 way worse. Okay. Yeah, so sometimes you can you can use the little bridgey bit, assuming you leave it movable and you don't um, glue it down. You can use it to like do like slight adjustments in the intonation. Um, I haven't ever had this like set up, so there's probably some. I could probably mess with the truss truss rod a little bit. Um. The intonation is a little bit out now, I'd say, yeah, after five years. It, when I first put it together, it was pretty even, like maybe just like on the snark tuner, like one or two bars sharp on the 12th fret. Um, but now it's like a quarter tone up on the 12th. Well now see, that's good. I mean, it could also be that this stick needs a little bit of adjusting. I just made it yesterday so that I could play it. I was so excited to have this restrung and to just like sit outside and play my bass that I like did not maybe put as much effort into making that like as perfect as it could be. So I might pull that out later and like whittle it down so that it's a little bit more even on the top. Because like right now the D is good and the A is good. like totally fine, the same both open and on the 12th. Jeez, a little And the G's totally fine, but the E is sharp on the 12th fret. Like by a quarter tone. So I'll mess around with that later. Anyway, I think I've spent a long enough time talking while tuning. First, I'm just gonna play some basic one, four, five um, punk riffs on this thing so you can sort of just hear the tone. And then I'll sing you a couple of songs, one with softer vocals so you can hear how the instrument kind of like marries with vocals um, in a softer kind of way. And then I will like sing a song that has like much more like belty, like loud vocals so you can hear how it fits with the vocals in that kind of setting. So 
I'm not recording this through any kind of audio interface or anything. So I'm just recording this. This is the phone audio. I'm using a, just a Samsung smartphone. It's like nothing fancy. So what you're hearing now is, is pretty much just like the sounds in my backyard and everything. Sorry for the saw over there, but it's less bad than the loud beeping construction noises that were happening earlier this week. So I'm just gonna play you some basic riffs and then uh, some songs, and then you'll get to actually hear what this thing sounds like. got a pleasant bass tone. I Like, I like the sound of it. Um, if you don't like the sound of it, that's fine. Um, but I like it. I think it's good. That's how it sounds. So, uh, yeah, and the, the last two riffs were riffs that I wrote. Um, the one that I just played is called, what is that song called? Fuck, I wrote it, and I forget what the title is. Black Curtains. Black Curtains. It's off our first record. And then the one before that, um, I'll just sing you this song now, because it's actually a pretty good example of like a softer vocal. Um, I actually find that this is pretty good. Um, I've played and sang with it um, in lots of different contexts, and I find that it holds up pretty well to the voice, especially for me, like as an accompaniment instrument. Um, people sitting really far away might hear your voice more than the bass, but for you at least, it gives you a reference. Um, so that's good. Um, and now you'll hear what it sounds like.
forgive me and there's no other way this can be take a bottle of strong pink acetone and swipe away all the little mistakes all the little mistakes all the bigger as well as you can be There's some things I might have said or done differently but the truth of it is I was distracted by your beauty and there's no telling if I'll ever see you again so I'm hoping I can There you go, that's one. As you might imagine, that song is called Forgive Me, and there will soon be a video of it on this very channel with me playing my electric bass, which is the long scale Dan Electro. So if you want to hear um, what that song sounds like uh, with a drummer and me playing electric bass with like a ton of pedals and all that sort of stuff, um, that, that will be coming out soon. Um, okay, now I'm gonna play an old Hazel Dickens song so you can hear what happens with the bass and the vocals when somebody is really giving her on the vocals. Um, so yeah, I wrote the last one. I did not write this one. Uh, and it's a teeny, 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 tiny bit high for me. So I really have to push it. So that way you'll get to hear like what it sounds like um, together. Yeah. So that depending on your voice and like what you want to do with it and what kind of songs you want to sing, you can decide if this is the right project for you and you'll have as much information going into it as possible. Okay, uh, da -da 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 -da. remembering how to play the thing. All right, here we go. Uh, this is called The One I Love Is Gone. So 
I will hear in the mix whether this stood up to that. We'll find out. Well, it's been lovely talking to all of you. Um, I hope that you're all doing well. A lot can change in six years. I know I'm doing way better now than I was then on a personal note. So I'm really glad to be here talking to you all. If you watched the original video and you're clicking on this now, thank you so much for watching the original. Um, it's been really wonderful to see people from all around the world get excited about DIYing their own base and it's so great to have um, such a like sweet group of people um, watching that thing I made. Um, if you're interested in um, connecting with my band's music, which is me and my friend Greg, um, it's all going to be on this channel as well and you can find us on Spotify, all the usual places, but Bandcamp. You can definitely find us on Bandcamp. We're called Terrible and the Horribles. And I don't know, if you guys like, I might post more songs of me just hollering with my acoustic bass if the people um, want. Maybe even if the people don't want, you know, maybe if I want, I'll do that. Um, there's no guarantees. I might just fall off the face of the earth again for six years. So um, I hope that you found this illuminating and that um, if you were hoping for a demonstration, you have it finally at long last uh, gotten your demo of what this bass sounds like. Okay, bye, take care, um, I'll see you later.